Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to Images 2021, our discussion with the jurors. Um, I'm Eric Dillner, and I'm the CEO of the Shoreline Arts Alliance. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Uh, we've had an incredible month. I hope many of you have had a chance to join us with a lot of uh, what we've been doing. We had three amazing gallery talks with Terry Falk. Uh, why three, you ask? Well, we wanted to make sure that we could keep small uh, small groups going through the gallery together. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the Coffees um, Market uh, for sharing us uh, all the good uh, cookies and coffee and cider for all of us to enjoy uh, in between the events. So thank you so much for that, um, Coffees Country Market. Um, we also had uh, just, a, just a great, a beautiful sunny day, so that was fantastic. We've we're actually thrilled. The gallery has been full, just lots of folks coming in to see all the work. I hope you all get there to see it live. But of course, you can also see it on our website and learn more about each of our uh, folks who are in the show uh, by clicking on, on their art. Um, so uh, enjoy, enjoy every, everything that's, uh, that's out there for you. Um, this is our last virtual event. Um, but it's, I, I wanted to make mention of that because we have, in the last 40 years doing this, this uh, wonderful show, we had never been able to pull all our jurors from all the various states they come from uh, to be a part of this show in a discussion. So thanks to this virtual world of, um, of Zoom, we get to do that. Um, it's really fascinating to me that we have uh, also put it on Facebook because so many folks uh, find that the live event is exciting um, through Facebook. Last, uh, last week when we did our, um, our, uh, our award ceremony, there were over 300 people on Facebook in addition to the folks on, on, uh, on the Zoom with us. So uh, that's pretty exciting that we, we're, we're reaching that many people. Often our gallery talks were more like 60 to 80 people. So we're really getting out there. So again, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I'm not going to say much more. Uh, we're going to get, get into our, our event here quickly. Uh, tonight, as advertised, uh, we said we would celebrate the Audience Choice Award. Well, what's really fascinating is that we have several people who are absolutely tied right now for first place in the Audience Choice Award. So that means to me we got a lot of great work. So um, by the end of the night, Whitney's going to tell me if we've actually... Uh, had, had a really far out front runner. Um, it, it, and if not, we're going to keep it open for the next couple of weeks and do it uh, toward the end of the show. So your opportunity is there to, to vote tonight, but also uh, know that uh, I, I don't, I don't want to completely blow the whole thing and say we're doing it tonight in case we decide to keep moving on. Anyway, congratulations to all of you all who are in the show, all who submitted. That's a big, big deal as well. Uh, all right. So tonight, we have, I hope you've already met them through our other event. We have three fantastic jurors. Um, of course, they're remarkably talented and respected authorities in the world of photography. Um, but I have to say, this is a, the most wonderful group of people that we've, we've ever come across. They're just so genuine and love all of this work that you all have submitted. They took such great care uh, to celebrate each one of your pieces as they, um, and they, as they made their selection. And what I want to do tonight is start with a, in a place where we get to know them even more. Um, so I've asked each of them to say a few words um, about uh, themselves. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll say their, their story, whether it's, um, uh, I, well, I guess their portfolio, what their, what their world is about. So you can learn a little bit more um, from them uh, about, uh, I guess, about who they uh, who they see themselves uh, that they are today and who, where they're going. So, uh, and then we're going to get into um, a, a really fantastic discussion. So without any further ado, uh, sharing a little bit about your body of work, I'm going to ask Joe, uh, Joe, J Joseph Jerson to, to join us uh, on the screen. So Joseph, I'm going to pull up your uh, little, little something about you and then uh, take the floor. Joseph. Yes. <clears throat> you put in a tall order on us having to answer all those questions. <laughs> but I chose, um, I chose a particular image on the left of a, um, a wave crashing on a beach in the Marin headlands of San Francisco. 
And the reason I chose that is because there's a, a great, fun, serendipitous story about it. Um, I was represented by a gallery in Boston that Boston was contacted by the art consultant for Ralph Lauren. And the picture on the right will show my photograph in Ralph Lauren's Montauk living room. Well, that's a two page spread that was in El Decor magazine for the 25th anniversary and they chose different designers and they wanted to do profiles of their homes. Serendipitously, a production designer for a Kevin Costner movie contacted me after seeing my name in the magazine in the photograph because he was working on a movie for a that was the main character was a fine artist and they wanted work in his home that represented the character of the person. So I got all excited. They used 10 of my photographs. They filled the main character's house with my photography. Go to the opening of the movie with my wife. Come to find that the movie, Mr. Brooks, was an adult horror movie. The main character was a serial killer. <laughs> so, be careful of what you wish for. You just might get it. <laughs> but, but at least a serial killer had good taste in photography. So I was pleased to be a part of it. That's wonderful. Thank you for that great story, Joseph. We so appreciate it. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Stella Kramer. Stella, won't you share a bit of your history? Uh, well, I worked for years at the different magazines in the days when magazines were magazines. Newsweek and People and Sports Illustrated. I worked at the New York Times for several years. And now I work with photographers one-on-one -on, -one on their projects, book projects, helping them to develop their projects or their work. And I also publish a small photo zine now because I'm looking for work where I feel that the work is really unique and strong and hasn't gotten the audience that it should get. So I work with a designer and we put out Stella Zine. We're working on our fourth issue right now, hoping to have that out sometime next month. And it's been just a great collaboration between myself and a graphic designer. And it's also been really fun searching for work and looking at tons and tons of work because our aim is to not be genre specific and not be design specific so that each issue stands alone on its own as a unique piece of photography. Uh, basically, any kind of work. Uh, right now, the issue we're working on is going to be um, completely abstracted, which is really going to be fun to figure out and to work with. And sometimes it's photographers I know that I've come across. The first issue on the, on the left was a friend of mine who just is a spectacular photographer. The middle one was a young woman I met at a portfolio review several years ago, and I kept her card, her promo card, because I just thought her work was terrific and finally got a way to do something with it. And then the work on the right, I had seen um, a blurb book that the photographer had published, and I met him at a portfolio review several years ago and decided it was a timely, story about black farmers around the US. And so we did a black and white issue. Next issue will be color. So we're looking for anything that just strikes our eyes. And it's been a lot of fun doing this because I also promote it. I'm the shipper, I'm the bookkeeper. I do pretty much all aspects of it. And um, yeah, I really like it. It's just a lot of fun to do work for yourself. This is my way of working with photography for myself. So I'm not working for magazines anymore, thank goodness. And when I work with clients, it's such a nice one-on-one -on -one collaboration. Um, and that's kind of what I do. That's who I am, that's what I do. And it's thank all- Thank you, Stella. Yeah, thank you, Stella. Archie, Archie LaSalle. Oh. Um. Good evening. I was about to say good afternoon because I've been Zooming pretty much all day with the New England 
Museum Association, uh, NEMA. And tonight, I'm really honored to be here with all of you. So a little bit about my work. It's, um, well, as, as Eric said, all three of us are a lot different uh, in our approach to our own work in and around photography. For me, it's after teaching, I'm one of the first people out of the door. I get there at six in the morning, but I leave at 2.30 sharp. And the last day of school is one of my favorite days because I go straight from the classroom to the airport. And I stay for two months somewhere traveling, photographing within a community. And I'm always excited to begin work because I don't photograph when I was teaching during the year, I mainly print. So the three images that are up here, um, they're taken at different points of time. The one on the left was taken in 2002. The one in the center was in 86. And the one on the right was in 14. And most of the times when I'm traveling, it, it's not so much about the place that I'm at, it's about the images that I make. And for me, I don't have a, let's say I'm, if I'm gonna be doing landscapes, if I'm gonna be doing architectural, or if I'm gonna be doing interiors, old cars, what have you. It's really about the line, shape and form, as I said before. And when I'm out, I usually get up and get out on the street by 5.36 every morning. And I don't really know what I'm, looking for, but I know it when I see it. And when I see it, it really screams. It's like uh, a kid waking up on their birthday and seeing all of the gifts that they have or for those kids who celebrate Christmas, uh, what they must feel like when they see uh, all of their toys. And I always sort of kept that childish sort of um, spirit uh, when I'm out working. And so the picture on the left was taken in England. The one in the center is in the south of France at Nice, Villa Arson. And the one on the right is from Argentina. And verticals, I'm really interested in photographing verticals because um, I think they're, it's harder, I think, to make a vertical, a good vertical photograph as opposed to a horizontal photograph. Uh, I think verticals are a little bit more aggressive and they, uh, and they're just looking at them. They have this in mind anyway. And we sort of read, most of us in, in this country, left to right, some read right to left or down. So I'm really interested in the lines, converging lines. I'm interested in nature. I'm interested in how human beings and nature work together, sort of like the photograph in the center. On that wall, it's river rocks, and the stairwell was made by humans, and nature has the tree in the center, or a little off center. So a lot of it is like adding things up as I'm going along and photographing it, with no rhyme or reason, just looking for really something that has great form, and movement. And that's my approach to, to my work. And I just really enjoy going out and embracing the process and seeing what I come back with. And that's how I, I sort of work. I don't know if that was very clear, but oh, absolutely, it's not always clear in my <laughs> mind as well when I'm working. So, yes, no, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, there we go. All right, good. Well, thank you all three so very much for, uh, for giving us a little insight into who you are. Um, let's go a little deeper into that. We're going to, what we did, uh, folks, is we, we um, gave them the difficult task of saying, uh, you know, select a dozen or so uh, pieces and uh, let's have a discussion about them. And so uh, the way this is going to work is that uh, one, one jersey is going to start launch in about um, uh, one of the pieces. And then if the others want to comment, then, then we'll go. I've, I've now put us in gallery view. So hopefully you can 
see everybody. Uh, if you have your, your screen also set to gallery view, so you can see all of them at once. And, uh, and we're gonna go into our first piece. And I believe that's um, a Lime Rock bathroom and that Archie is gonna start that discussion. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. Yes, yes, all yes. All right, here uh, we are. Nicole Croce. Uh, see, I'm really attracted to this particular image in so many different ways. I think it, 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 it speak to color, <clears throat> excuse me, it speak to color, line, shape, and form. And as I spoke about this earlier, when you look at the photograph, it gives you sort of, um, it's, it's, you see a right and you see a left. And the part on the right that I love about it is how it proceed, it recedes back. But even that is split in half. And then you have the diagonal line going across and you have also the silver box, uh, uh, stainless steel, what, what have you. And it reminds me a little bit of the um, uh, Marco uh, Rothko, uh, the painter, and just using red. I remember back in the 80s in New York, you would see a lot of these large canvas with one color. But in this, I, I just see the lots of vertical lines and that one triangle and the silver box. And I think to make a photograph that, number one, just one color basically with the little rivets of silver in, in there as well, but it, it's really tough to pull that off. And I think, you know, Nicole was very successful in doing this, uh, even with the top of the, the right, the left hand side, the top, how you have the little shadows and coming down and still going with those vertical lines. So I don't know if. Uh, it was very, it's very efficient, Archie. You're absolutely right. Everything in the frame is there and everything is needed in that frame. And it was composed. I mean, if you would expand out beyond the frame, the, may be many other objects that could have been considered, but they were intentionally not considered. And I think it makes for a very clean, efficient piece. You're on mute, Stella. Not anymore. <laughs> I love the way the colors contrast and I love the way it's balanced. It's a really balanced photo. Even though there's more happening on the right than the left, for me, it totally balances itself out. And I really like the perspective you get as you go into the darker red. And it's not red, it's just the darkness. So you have the light pushing the orange towards you, the red pushing it back. And I just really think it's a strong, strong, well-composed image. Great. Can we move on to the next one? And, and this is led by Joe. <clears throat> We, since we didn't have a theme for this show, what we wanted intentionally to do is try to represent as many different kinds of photography as we could. And here was something that was straightforward, scientific, but yet beautiful. And I would say this is a found object, just like, like the red wall, but it also shows skill in what was obviously a difficult lighting situation. I mean, the object obviously was luminescent itself, but to be able to have the skill to know how to create that exposure, capture the image, and then, then capture our attention, I think it makes for a very successful demonstration of a different kind of photography. It's straightforward, it's scientific, but no less valuable. For me, this squid is moving. I feel like I can see the movement of this in the curl of the tentacles, in the, the wave of the, I call them fins. I'm not sure what the scientific name would be for it. And I really appreciate that, that the moment that the photographer took this picture, everything was working correctly. Well, I'm, I'm going to follow up on what, what you were saying, Stella, is for me, it appears to be floating and the black is like the sea 
the Black Sea. <laughs> and I just feel like it's like the, the wall was like uh, uh, an inanimate object. And here it's like, even though it appears not to be moving, but as you said, it really is like floating, moving. It could be either in a black sea or in outer space. And I guess I, I, it goes back and forth from, from the black sea to out in space. And it has that sort of, um, I don't know, the sort of like something that, um, the uh, giant telescopes will bring in and, and, and you see out in space, you know, the Hubble, for instance. Yeah, yeah I see that. Should we move on to the next? Okay. I found it really interesting in looking at all the work that we did that there were certain colors that repeated in different images that we looked at in oceans and skies. And it was captured in this, which is not a natural thing. It's a constructed building. And I love the layers that I'm seeing here because I find it, it keeps me looking much longer trying to figure it out. It's almost like a puzzle to me. And I like the color scheme and the way the colors shift from the orange to the blue. I think that's really works really very, very well. Um, and there's so much repetitive graphic imagery, you know, they're the boxes, the, the rectangles versus sort of squares of windows. Um, I just think it's just one of those images that is, it's not created as much as just finding the right light and the right moment and the right spot to take the picture, to make it interesting. I think that's and right. I think the perspective of the photographer probably change that image 10 times as you walked up left and right along the building. And then choosing to have it fall back like that really abstracts the whole piece. So it's, it's not as much a, a story about architecture as it is about line and color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. To, to me, I, I, I see Robert's piece as, well, he says rainbow. But it, it, it's, it, it appears to have like layers, vertical layers. And it has that push and pull also with the depth that you get from it, from the orange on the left and the blues on the right. That's cool. One's warm, one's cool. It, it really has a nice flow to it. And I, I don't know if I'm looking at something, it almost looked like um, some sort of a, a a ride you may see like at, at Coney Island or someplace, you know, it has that sort of mystical Ferris wheel type movement and that you see at night at Carnival's, but I don't know if this is night or day when this was taken uh, late afternoon, but it has a nice layered feel for me. Fantastical. <laughs> oh. Dio, Mio, yes. Dr. Irving and a Rear Window by Julie O'Connor. Now, the photograph on the left, I'm wondering if the buildings on the right is one of those buildings as I first look at them together like this. But when, when I see the one on the left, one of the people that comes into mind for me is uh, Roy D. Caraba. Um, some of his work, uh, The Sweet Fly Papers of Life, is one of the images that I think of, uh, especially when I see uh, Dr. Irving there um, in a suit, as opposed to uh, representing the sport that he played. And I love the fact that he's. Uh, looks more as a business person uh, within the community. And just how those, as I said earlier, those yellow line, how the yellow line moves from the left goes to the right and then breaks back. It also reminds me a bit of Stephen Shore's work that he does. And, and so I, I was looking at these photographers and I am just, amazed how we're all connected in some way. It's not like some are up here 
and others are down below, I just find that there's this thread that goes through all the way through the, the well-known photographers and those that are just starting out and all of those that are in between. And as far as the picture on the right, it, it's sort of, it's like the Edward Hopper's uh, Sunday morning, even though that was a sort of a, it was a horizontal image that he had painted. But I just love the difference of the doors and the windows. And you can just stand there and look and decipher this image uh, for hours. And that's what I love about a lot of the work that was presented uh, this year, uh, my first year, <laughs> but I hope to return again. But I I'm just really amazed about the quality of the work of all of the photographers. And I'm really pleased with these two together. I'm surprised now knowing that these were both from the same person. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note, and when we were making our decisions and we were looking at the work, we were not given the names of the photographers nor titles of the photographs. Mm -hmm. But in preparing for this presentation, we still without names or titles made selections to compare things side by side. And I'm pleased to see that it came from the same person because there's different perspective no about each of those. Mm -hmm. Should we move along? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and here's another example, side by side, but two different people. Um, we were struck in these two photographs about the open possibilities for interpretation of each of them. The young, the young boy on the left, you're wondering what might he be thinking? And the black and white photograph on the right, I think what I wanna point out here is that on the left, it's more about the subject matter and less about the photographer. And on the right, it's more about the photographer. <laughs> because you start to question what is going through the photographer's mind that the composition is the way that it is. On the left, it's all about the subject. Two different perspectives, both portraiture, both well done, well crafted. Well, to me, both of them are the beginning of a story and it's a story for the viewer to make up. I'm less interested in really talking about what the photographer had in mind as much as I look at this and I'm writing a story about the boy in the golden hour, looking out the window, dreaming of whatever he's dreaming and then looking on the right and thinking about childhood and growing up and how I can relate to the little black shoes with the strap and the white, the white socks and so what I love about both of these images is, is they are the beginning of a story. And I really love the way photographers allow viewers to make their own decision about what they're looking at. Um, because that's, for me, that's really what, what art is about. It's about allowing me to put myself into the process of whatever the artwork is that I'm looking at. I can become a part of it because I'm making up a story in my head when I'm looking at these pictures. And that's what I love about these two, is you could write, you could write a book about either one of them. And I think these are both photographs that you could come to every day and always have a different perspective on them. I Absolutely. think that's right. Absolutely. Well, what I get from this, um, I get two different feelings. Uh, the one on the left is, is more reflective but if the person was looking at me, it will probably be a little different, but it's, it's, it's more reflective. And the one on the right is, it has a historical feel. Um, a main, maybe it's because of the attire that the person is wearing. And it's sort of, 
like what Stella was saying is like she can remember those shoes like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And even though it, you don't see the head of the person, you still have that story, as you were saying. It, 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 it holds your attention. And, and that, to me, both of them, and I've grown to love the one on the left even more, especially since Joseph pointed out several things I mean, uh, in an earlier conversation. And, and what I also love about this, I feel as though they are very convincing. Uh, the photographer made us feel, both photographers made us understand that it, it's convincing, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, the dream world. When I first saw these photos, that's what it was for me. It was like a dream that you, you can't exactly remember, but there are little moments that come out and maybe it's colors or, or it's place. Um, and it's also for me such an antidote to sort of the world around me. And so I like to jump into these, sort of dive into these photos and feel the natural world and feel the sunlight and feel the blue sky and feel the softness of the flowers. Um, I really, really liked looking at these pictures and I really like the feeling it sort of made my shoulders come down, you know, cause it's releasing tension for me. And once again, it's, it reminds me of fragments of dreams, um, moments that I've, woken up thinking I had a hold on something, but I didn't. And that's what these, these, these three photos are for me. I love the point of view. I love how, how they're very different and yet they have a similar sense to them and so that they work really well together. Um, sometimes it makes me think that I'm sort of like a bird and this is my point of view, the way I'm coming into the photo, sort of at the left, it's kind of at ground level in the middle, it's going right into the flower that I want to, to uh, drink the, the sweetness of. And the other one is sort of that moment when, when you get one of these wonderful showers in the summer, these soft showers. And for me, these are very emotionally charged for me personally. And I am a true lover of nature and color and the softness of them really appeals to me as well. You need to get out of the city more, Stella. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going back to the very first time I saw all of these photographs. I was just blown away with so many images. I had to put them on the big screen TV. I had no idea that these were connected by this one photographer. And and Stella, you really brought me around to the one in the center. I was already there with the one on the left. But then when I start thinking, and when you said dreamlike, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, I just feel a sense of being in space again on the one on the right, just going through the Milky Way with the, with the little raindrops as you were seeing. But it's really composed really well. With the, with the green leaves, long vertical leaves, and you got the pink there and all of the stars around it of water, what have you. And I just love the one on the left a lot. And I just think they really, really, they really hold together for me. Just lovely. I like your su suggestion, Stella, that it's the perspective of an insect or a a bird flying around and seeing these things mm. adds more, more to the whole piece. And I think they work well together. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the mayor, Lisa Paulette Silverman. This classic, classic 30s. Here we are in 2021 or 2020, and you know we're sitting there looking at our uncle after a long day of delivering mail in his 
I guess, is uniform. But you know, in all seriousness, this photograph is really well put together. It is so well put together. And I talked about this a lot before when you look at the mailbox. I keep going back and forth from the mailbox to the gentleman, the mailbox gentleman, gentleman mailbox, the white socks, all of those classic things of so many great photographers that came along before. And that energy is still alive today. And that's one of the beauties about this photograph. I mean, you look at his hat, you look at the glasses, you look at all of this. This could have been one of those photographs taken back in the day. You know, with, you know, you see the more modern things around with the mailbox and all, but uh, I just think it is really composed really well. Um, the vertical line going up on the railing, all of that, the gestures of the hands, the calmness. I mean, this is something that you would see just walking down a local neighborhood, you're just walking down the street, person sitting out on the stoop there. You know, it's just... I would also venture that this is more successful as a black and white photograph than it would be as color because of that mailbox and gentleman comparison. It becomes an abstraction in black and white and it would become too real and you would lose that balance between those together, those two subjects together if it was in color. So I think having chosen to put it into color, I don't know if it was shot in black and white film or if it was digital and then color was removed, but I think it was a successful choice. Mm. Yes. Moving along. Right, I put these two pieces together. I was struck by Stella was talking about how palettes repeated themselves. Well, here was an instance where these were two images that we saw early on in the collection of all the submissions and one later on in those submissions. But in all likelihood, this is during the beauty hour of the day. Um, and each of them succeed, but in a very different way. The, Foggy Sunrise by Ali is just calm and peaceful. And it lets you drink up all of that beauty. Whereas The Geyser by Alan Samuel, that's full of mystery. What's the smoke? Who's the man? Who's the group in the background? And it offers up more questions. And they're both interesting in that one was made by a female, one was made by a male. Can you see the genders in each of those? I, I think that's worthy of a discussion, um, but I think there's, there's history that each photographer brings to their perspective at that moment in time. One of the things that I like about the geyser photo is I like the way that you have these figures on the left and in the distance, you see these lines, these vertical lines, which I'm taking to be perhaps smokestacks. And to me, that balances the image out really well. And that your eyes sort of makes a trip around the photo. You know, you can either go from the left around to the, the smoke on the right, or you can go the other way. And what you find is a, is a real balance that you're not, the figures are not claiming all the attention you have the clouds and the smoke and the sun and you just all these things that balance each other so that your eyes are not just drawn in one place. It allows you to go around in a circle and, and it uses the frame of the image itself really well, giving us something on the top, on the bottom, on the left, on the right. And it just works really well. The image on the left, the foggy sunrise for me is another one of these situations where I imagine myself standing there in the cold morning, looking out and seeing these wonderfully soft, beautiful colors as a, as a beautiful way to start a day. And the mm -hmm. fact that the, the color scheme in both of these are so close, I really like that. Mm -hmm. I really do like that because for me as an editor, sequencing and telling a story is really important. And that's the way I approach when I look at work. And so these two images together, I would have put together 
if Joseph hadn't done it, because to me, you, you get the trees in the image on the left, the trees that are on the right, and then there are trees on the left of the other image. And it's, it's almost like one flows into the next. And they, it could actually be the same place, but different perspectives. Yeah, just really soft and beautiful. Like mm -hmm. perfect light, perfect time to catch this, mm -hmm. capture this. Uh, I yeah. find that the one on the left has me looking more going inward and I don't travel around as much as the one as Stella mentioned as the one on the right but I think that uh, one is sort of like uh, the one on the right is that spotlight sort of shining at you and the one on the left it's just sort of calming and sort of recedes and what I would like to see also, and, and, and as I'm looking at that, is like what it would look like, the one on the left, three minutes later, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, five I'll bet minutes. you wouldn't get as beautiful of a photograph. Of course it's all so fleeting. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's, I think both of them are just well composed. And that's what I really wanted to speak about real quickly here also, is all of the photographs that that we have seen and and even the ones that didn't necessarily make it in the show for the most part they were all well composed and i i i commend all of the photographers uh, for that and really nice mm -hmm. ah so this is the opposite of what i was speaking about before with color and light this is darkness and the beauty of darkness to me I love the fact that it's all vegetables. And I love the fact that they're not your, your standard vegetables and that they're not trying to be Edward Weston, um, peppers or anything else. I love the fact that they are, I love the red cabbage because of the way it fills the frame. And it almost makes you have to say, now what is that that I'm looking at? Because we hadn't seen, as Joseph said, we hadn't seen these titles underneath it. So for a moment, looking at it, trying to figure out what it was, which I really like, because I like to participate in the photography. And then just the, the beauty of the husk cherries, the way they fall, and that they're just, they're just, you can feel the texture of them, or I can feel the texture of them. And then radishes are just pretty spectacular. Um, I like the fact that the hus husk cherries and the radishes, that there are three each. And yet with the cabbage, you have a singular image, although it sort of looks to me like three leaves. Um, but I love the darkness. I think that people should spend more time looking at things in the dark, not always, not always searching for light. Because there's a, lot, there's a lot to be said. It's almost like it's a dream on another level. It's a deeper dream. It's the, it's the point of when you are so, so in the dream that you come out of it without remembering, as opposed to the others, which to me were more that I could glimpse moments of them. So I, I love these and I love the fact that they sort of play off each other, this group and the earlier one that I spoke with, but in totally different ways. So thank you, Marcy. Yeah, they, they're almost like illustrations because they, you can see all the lines, the delicateness of each of them. And like the cabbages, it's monumental. You kind of lose scale um, and it becomes really spectacular because of it. And, and I think because it's such a dark purple vegetable on a black background, it just reduces it to its simple lines. I like it. It also reminds me the cabbage that is uh, of a piece of cloth, uh, mm -hmm. just how delicate it could look, but bold and strong, but it still has a certain sort of uh, softness to it that it, it, it's not only a vegetable, you can look at it, as I said, as a piece of material or paper, what have you. And even with the cherries, uh, what they're wrapped in and the husk there. It's, it has that same appeal. And I was looking at those radishes for 
it took me a while to see them as radishes. I, I saw them more as beets for, for the longest. Uh, <laughs> first time looking at the photographs, I was like, oh, beets. I love beets. And then it was like, oh, radishes. <laughs> and, and, but that, that's one of the beauties, how, how we all see things similar, but in so many different ways as well. And, and that's, that's the beauty of art, I think. We can all bring... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the artists can bring us all to a different place and we can all meet up at the same time and and walk away feeling pretty good that it was successful enriched right yeah i mean these could be, these could be coming out of um a painting like a um, rembrandt mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. you know I and I, it, right and so that's another thing about photography that's wonderful is that it doesn't have to necessarily in your, in your way of approaching it or the way you feel about it, it does not necessarily have to align itself to photography. Mm -hmm. that art can expand to have you see it in all kinds of different mediums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if you're looking at a photo, I can see painting within this. You know, and I, and I just think that's one of the wonderful things that can happen when you look at art and you really, you really look deeply into it. Right. You can definitely see see the painting in all three of those. Mm -hmm. and, but what I love what you said, though, Stella, it was they're not like uh, Edward Weston. It, it's like these are legitimate, again, convincing. And so many times I think people fall into the trap of is, is, is following some photographer from the past and trying to build on what they have already done. And each one of these stands on its own merit. And I think they are extremely successful. All three really wonderful. And here again, here's an instance where I don't think that they would have been as strong had they been in black and white. The fact that color is introduced makes mm -hmm. it more successful. Mm -hmm. And the use of light. Yes. You know, that, that really is what gives it its glow, mm -hmm. is the way the light is used in this. And, and the it, sparing use of light. Yes, exactly. And it would not have worked in black and white at all. Well, it would it's have been flat. Of, uh, this is almost three-dimensional to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes you dig deep mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, into the, you know, you have to go searching to that radish on the left. You have to go searching to that lower left-hand corner of the red cabbage. And all of them, you have to really uh, invest your eyes in, 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 in exploring these three images, which is really lovely. Okay, so what we're um, trying to go to is the flag, the new oh. flag by Hank Paper. And I'm gonna oh, yeah. just, I'm gonna shut it down first. No, it won't even let me do that. Well, can we describe the photo for- I think photo? if you can, if you can see it, that'd be great. I can do it, yes. So the flag is, I think it's the only image in the entire show that has that feeling to it, a look like that. We've seen many images that sort of transform maybe into another image. But the flag image, two people came to mind uh, when I was looking at it. And um, I was like, this could be a Gordon Parks photograph or uh, either it could be a Norman Rockwell sort of illustration or painting. Mm -hmm. And in, in that image, everybody that's in it, except for one person, uh, has some sense that uh, a photograph is being made, except for one. And I think that's the child, the small child sort of in the center, whether people are looking off to the left. And that's where it has that Norman Rockwell feel to it. And the kid on the right photographing a, a small flag. And it's one of those places in an environment where we've all been in, like, well, most of us. And it's not very um, inviting. It's not a very pleasant place to be in. It gets that feel of like, oh my God, I really wish I was somewhere else. And people are not making eye contact or everybody is in their own little invisible box. And here's a child, just free spirit, just 
in the mom's lap or dancing all around. And so when I, when I think of um, one of the photographs by uh, Gordon Parks and it talks about, um, I think it's called uh, My Freedom Can't Wait. And uh, in the image there is like beauty, dignity and anger. And you sort of get some of that in that image as well. But I, I just, I, I, I like the image a lot. I, I think it was, um, it, it, each person there, you can see a story being in their head. They are going through what they're going to do when they get out of that particular environment. And, uh, and it's not, again, not a very comfortable environment. Right. I don't know if I... Well I've never I, talked about a photograph without seeing a photograph. Like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. People can reference it to the at the website. It's called The New Flag. Hank Paper is the photographer. It looks like it is a um, American citizenship in, uh, ceremony. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of Robert Frank's Americans. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but for all the things that you said, Archie, you did a beautiful job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss you guys so much. <laughs> no, and Eric, thank you for your letter. <laughs> thank you guys. I mean, this is, I really, I really have done myself here by making it impossible for you to uh, do your job. We got you, we got you. Uh, strange Three ancestors, Archie. So the, the little boy's got a camera, he's got a... <laughs> There's a group of people sitting on benches. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a round robin. That's right. And there's a woman looking off into the distance and another one looking up. And the one guy her. on the right, he's looking down like, I'm here with all of these people. Right. Trying to disappear. Mm -hmm. And the boy is fascinated with his new flag. Yes. 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 <laughs> I'm an American. Yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah. Thank it's you're right. Those one of those um, perhaps um, citizenship. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. Yeah, I, I just for a small aside, uh, my wife and I adopted two children and uh, they came from South Korea. And when they were still infants, we went for an American citizenship ceremony in New York City. And it was the proudest day, both yeah. times. Yes. It is a very emotionally charged day. It really is. Always, those things are always amazing because of the, the wealth of humanity. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And that's when you realize, regardless of your culture, we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. only like one race, the human race, and, and that's all of us. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. I, 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 I was just wondering, it's like, it, I would have thought there would have been more smiles, but I guess everybody has to be sort of stoic, uh, what have you, but. I don't know, another, another example of the audience. Ah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I switched computers, what else, you know? I got another computer going. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. So I'm yeah. actually on our website. Is there any other photo that we didn't talk about? No, we should, I'm kidding. That was the last one, I think. I'm kidding. So, um, yeah. Well, you all have been tremendous. Uh, uh, and we just, uh, uh, I can't thank you enough for, um, for really, uh, I mean, you not only uh, looked at 700 plus photos uh, and tried to figure out, you know, weed through and find the ones that you wanted to talk about and, and give awards to, but just what you all saw tonight is what happened on every piece that they looked at. They spent time, the three of them had input, lots of banter uh, around each piece. Um, the word that I just can't stop saying is care. You all care so much about every piece that you look at that I think that it was, uh, it was just more than, uh, more than a wonderful opportunity uh, for Whitney and I to just witness the process and, and get to be a part of, of uh, of seeing what you what you had to offer, so we so hope that you'll come back to us um, in one of our other other events. We uh, we typically don't 
bring a lot of the same judges back year after year. So we keep mixing things up. But boy, I wish I could just say to all of you, come back right now because we've had such a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, just to, I, can I let our viewers in, know that they've had such a good time together that they're all trying to find a way to make their self to make their way to um, to uh, our, our Connecticut region here to have lunch and see the show together. So that's uh, what, what a beautiful thing that has, that has happened here. Um, so I, I wanna thank uh, my board of directors for all that they have done to, um, to make this happen. Uh, and, and really, and I want to set, thank all of our donors. Listen, I, I can't pull the slides up like I'd planned. Sorry about that, my donor friends. But you understand technology sometimes plays a, throws, a, throws a curve at you. And my images uh, committee, thank you so much also for, for everything that you, you've done along the way. Um, we, it, we still have another month of the gallery being open. We're looking for uh, folks to help us in the, in the gallery to, to gallery sit. We're selling picked photos, which is really exciting. Folks are coming in and buying them. So we'd love to have people there. Um, so when that day comes again uh, for more purchasing, you can help us pave that, that little wave way through. So uh, if you haven't signed up, come on, uh, you know, give Whitney a shout, communications at shorelinearts.org. Um, and again, thank you all so much for, for everything. It, do, I'd love to give you another just moment here to say, uh, thanks. Uh, I mean, for us to thank you and, and for you to um, sign off. So um, we always do it in the same order. So Joseph, I guess you're up. <laughs> I, I was just pleased to be invited. I made some new friends and had a wonderful experience. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I have to echo that. It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Yes, someday in real life, hopefully. Um, but the, the, the whole experience has been wonderful. Thank you very much for inviting me into it. And it's been a blast. And I just want to say once again, support art, buy art, visit art, look at art, make it part of your lives. Make because art. Mm -hmm. Without art, we don't really have anything. He's the soul. It is the foundation of every society. I can't say that enough and thank everyone for continuing to make art. And um, I've really enjoyed this experience so much. Uh, I had no idea that it would be so long and so wonderful at the same time. <laughs> that to me, each time after each gathering, I look forward to the next. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I am truly, truly honored I need everybody's email in the group and uh, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. And Eric, I, I was wondering if it would be possible for us to get some of the comments that people may have uh, sent in just to have a good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. If you could share some of that with us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great, great segue into we always want to improve. So, um, you know, send us notes on what you think we can do next time. Uh, you know, what, what else do you want uh, from us? And, and what, what can we offer you more? Because truthfully, we're all trying to figure this whole new world out where it's some virtual and some life. And, so, you know, this is on Facebook tonight live, but we'll, we'll convert it into YouTube. So are we spreading it out all over the place? Absolutely. Um, but somehow we want to bring people back together. So yeah, send us comments. And we'll pass them along along to you as well. Um, my chat function isn't working working right now, but if there's something in the chat, uh, you know that we'll we'll pass that along to you, and maybe we can get some answers. So, again, thank you all so much. Um, uh, I, I look forward to the next time we all meet, and uh, I think we should uh, say good night, sign off, and again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Ciao. Thank you, Archie. Thanks. Love you all. <laughs>